This is CBS News, New York. Today marks one year since the deadly attacks on spa workers in Atlanta. Eight people were killed. Six of them were Asian women. Since the start of the pandemic, people in the Asian community have increasingly been victimized in biased hate crimes. There have been nearly 11,000 hate incidents against Asian American and Pacific Islanders since March of 2020, according to the group Stop AAPI Hate. Recently in Yonkers, a 67-year-old woman from the Philippines was brutally attacked. She was punched over 125 times and viciously kicked multiple times. Police say the suspect, who has an extensive criminal past, is being held without bail. The increased attacks in our area have reignited conversations about public safety for Asian Americans, determining the root of the problem and ways to solve it. Joining us today is the president of Queens College of CUNY, Frank Wu. He is the author of the book Yellow Race in America Beyond Black and White. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me to talk about such a serious issue. Absolutely. Now, how much of an impact has COVID-19 been on these problems? Well, the issue isn't new. There have been attacks on Asian immigrants and their American-born children going back all the way into the 19th century. But the pandemic made everything worse. Because, you see, a lot of folks, they looked at you, even if you're not from China, even if you're a third generation American. And they said, this is your fault. It's because of you, we're sick. You hear people shouting that sort of thing and slurs and go back to where you came from before they spit on people, shove them to the ground so hard they break bones, stab them, shoot them. It's a common theme. And it's just escalating, right? You know, so there's a very large population of Asian students on your campus. Queens College. So what are you hearing from them? People are afraid. They're not only afraid for themselves, they're afraid for the elders. So many of these attacks, and you see it on those viral videos, you, you have to look away. They're so brutal. The people who are shoved in front of subway trains to their death or followed home and killed. And then, of course, the Atlanta spa shootings. People are afraid. They're afraid that just going about their business, going shopping, doing nothing different than any of their neighbors or coworkers, that their mothers or grandmothers will be attacked viciously. It feels like it's open season. And even though the pandemic is ending, this violence hasn't. Yeah, so what are you doing um, at the college to really address those concerns? Are there any policies in place or additional safety measures in place? We embrace diversity, equity, and inclusion. We hold workshops. We've partnered with a nonprofit group, the Yellow Whistle Project, that's giving out yellow whistles to people to blow on for safety and so that bystanders can become upstanders. In some of these cases, it's not just the terrible attack. As horrific as that is, it's also that there are people who stand by. One of those videos that circulated, it showed, even though the perpetrator apparently had a record, at the end of the video, and, and I don't even recommend you watch it uh, because it's, it's just too heart-wrenching. The, the woman is on her way to church, is lying on the sidewalk. She's been kicked in the head so critically she has to go to the hospital in serious condition. But there are two doormen who you see. They've watched the whole scene unfold. At the end, they go over and they literally close the door turn around and walk away. So let's talk a little bit more about that bystanders becoming upstanders. Sometimes people are afraid to intervene because they don't want to get hurt themselves. What are some of the options that people have to really help people during these incidents? But then also, how do you support this effort in a, in a broader way? That's the point of the whistles. Blow on the whistle, call for help. You don't have to put yourself at risk. You just have to help summon the police, call 911, do anything just by making uh, it clear that someone else is there. There was a fellow, he was in the news, he had his whole face slashed with a box cutter. He's disfigured, permanently scarred. And he said, when he cried out, nobody came, nobody did anything. That's part of the problem that there's indifference. It's because people assume if you're Asian, 
you're a crazy rich Asian. What kind of problems have you got anyway? Or you're a foreigner. You're not really one of us, an equal. And that's part of what we have to combat, these root causes of the problem. Yeah, Frank Wu, I think what we really need to take away is that all of us can do something. All of us absolutely can do something. Thanks so much for joining us. Now, in response to the increased attacks on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, a new coalition was formed last year called Stop AAPI Hate. For information on its mission, go to our website, cbsnewyork.com.